Hey, Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over the uh, massive green spike on Bitcoin and the uh, green just overall in the uh, crypto industry, as we also see uh, stocks making a little bit of a uh, turn to the uh, greener side after the uh, last couple uh, pretty much uh, blood red days. Uh, we do expect uh, some type of reaction in the market. Uh, we will get into uh, more detail about this, uh, but uh, essentially today, Today, we did get a, a jobs report, a little bit mixed, but uh, we do see that unemployment rate uh, ticking up, which is what Jerome Powell wants to see in order to eventually have a uh, Fed uh, pivot, you know, that mythical pivot which I warned you guys it wasn't going to happen, but, uh, you know, the market was just intent on driving itself up in order, uh, I believe, for the uh, billionaires and the millionaires and the institutions that kind of are in their positions to be able to dump on your head. And this market really hasn't changed, okay? It's just that we move in cycles of up and down uh, while we go down and also while we go up. So be very careful about pumps and and always take your profit, guys. Always be selling. Put food on your table. Do not collect these coins. Do not collect these stocks. They are not going to be loyal to you. So you don't have to be loyal to them. That's why we trade. Uh, you can, of course, DCA in to a certain levels, but just to be careful and wary of how the market works, because sometimes markets go sideways for even 10 to 15 years. So unless you're really committed to investing and you know what investing means, okay, then uh, just remember to pay attention to those points uh, where it is profitable and don't FOMO into those points, right? And you should be uh, buying closer to the, uh, you know, those uh, danger zones at the bottom, uh, you know, at support rather than just, uh, you know, when things start pumping, okay? And of course, we can see this with Doge, right? Doge just pumped to heaven because there was so much speculation about uh, Twitter integrating uh, Doge into its crypto wallet. Uh, but however, uh, with uh, Elon Musk firing half of the uh, Twitter workforce, of course, uh, work on the crypto wallet had to pause. And so uh, Dogecoin is seeing some type of a pullback. Now, with the rest of the market pumping, is this really going to get slaughtered? Uh, I feel doubtful you know that speculation is still going to be there until the day that elon says no dogecoin will not be part of our wallet and we're canceling the wallet something like that uh you know dogecoin will still have those hopes and so of course the uh, doge army still has a uh, chance but uh, guys of course uh you know this didn't really matter it really just set the uh, tone for the market where you had all of these uh you know meme coins all these dog coins just pumping on the speculation of what could happen in the market and just Elon Musk and these type of big billionaires and kind of industry changes that could come along with Twitter integrating a crypto wallet was enough to just lay the groundwork for some interest in uh, crypto again. And so what do we see happening next? Well, lo and behold, uh, Meta, a.k.a. Facebook, right, uh, you know, it announces that Polygon, Arweave, you know, all of these, uh, you know, very interesting kind of tools in the uh, crypto space are potentially going to be integrated into Instagram uh, for its NFT tools, which could also uh, bring it to uh, Facebook. Facebook. And so yesterday, of course, I mentioned that uh, Zuckerberg basically saved crypto from falling to the next level lower because this is incredibly bullish news. So suddenly you have the potential for Twitter and you also have the potential for Facebook. And it feels like there's kind of a floor being built on crypto as this excitement of the possibility of uh, crypto actually being used for real world business reasons, right, on major billion dollar platforms as opposed to just these uh, small kind of uh, silly kind of uh, crypto websites and really little niche kind of uh, things. You know, even though uh, OpenSea is a massive behemoth in the crypto industry, it just is not comparable to a name like uh, Facebook or Twitter. And so uh, the fact that uh, Zuckerberg is uh, starting to integrate these things and the fact that he's uh, investing so much into the uh, metaverse play for the long run 
it does suggest that there could be some life to what's uh, happening here. And then today we get the news, JP Morgan, right, DBS Bank and SBI complete live DeFi trades on a public uh, blockchain. And so, guys, even though, uh, you know, this stuff can be kind of sketchy, uh, you know, some of these banks, uh, you know, well, let's just leave that commentary for uh, another uh, time. But uh, the point is that you are suddenly seeing, right, DeFi, meme coins, right, uh, you know, uh, functional gaming tokens, functional transactional uh, tokens, and, uh, you know, these different types of, uh, you know, cryptos being integrated into real business on a massive, uh, uh, sorry, uh, with businesses that have massive scale scales uh, compared to the crypto market and you can see how this could just build enthusiasm and create that platform for a uh, potential jump in the market and so uh, just for some uh, truth in advertising uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I was saying in uh, yesterday's video the uh, four hour let's go ahead and throw on our EMAs uh, just to see what we look like uh, we do have a little bit of a squeeze going on here on the four hour and so if we are able to break that uh, 50 EMA right that blue line right here then that would be uh, you know fairly bullish especially if we can uh, quickly follow up with the uh, 21 EMA of course we do have the uh, 35 EMA uh, directly overhead and so there's just a lot of of these EMAs uh, just kind of suppressing us right here on the uh, four hour but if we can pop through all of them I mean uh, you know that might be a a, f a pretty substantial move in my opinion if we can just uh, get a nice pop through there uh, if we take a look Okay, guys, so what I was pointing out is that we had a bullish structure on the four hour and that uh, we were essentially uh, in the middle of a, a four hour squeeze play against one, two, three major EMAs, as well as a, uh, a very significant uh, simple moving average. And so that just by itself would create a uh, a very powerful pop in the charts, which I did think uh, could take us up to, uh, you know, at least uh, some of these are resistance points, perhaps, uh, you know, to my uh, uber bullish uh, level. And so guys, like I, I just could not be uh, bearish yesterday. Um, if I do just kind of uh, skim through this stuff on the uh, daily, I was showing you how we found support on the uh, 21 and how we were starting to build momentum. And I was pointing out how this candle had just gotten above the nine and the four and and why that would be bullish. OK, and uh, then uh, I was suggesting to you that the number that we had to beat in order to be uber bullish was around here, around this uh, 20,800 level, because we did have this purple uh, 89 EMA on the uh, daily, which just had been uh, continuing uh, to suppress us. You can see this 89, 89, 89. And so getting over that level is what's going to free us to potentially move all the way up to uh, 25, 26 thousand dollars. And while if we look at um, other time frames, of course, uh, there could be the potential uh, for us to get stuck somewhere around 22,500 or, you know, a little bit in between. But anyway, we do have the possibility, uh, you know, if you look at the weekly to bounce up to uh, 22,000, right, 22,500, and then perhaps come back down, maybe chop around and get into a weekly squeeze. So guys, we have to pay attention to this stuff. It may not last forever but uh you know what i was talking about in the last episode where um we were holding the line here and either we were going to make a head and shoulders that broke down to grab this liquidity before going up or we were just going to chop around in this wedge and if we could get on top of it we would probably see a huge spike you know at least to that to twenty thousand eight hundred dollar level and that's uh, precisely uh, what we saw. And so, guys, uh, you know, the uh, alpha momentum pools, I don't know if you can uh, take a look here, but uh, let's just go to the uh, main chart, to be honest, uh, because uh, it, it, it basically went down, uh, you know, precisely the way that we were uh, talking about. And uh, if I do uh, throw on 
these uh let's see the uh, momentum pools here uh look at this guys look at this uh momentum pool uh not only did we break above the uh, momentum pool and capture that momentum guys it's no joke really like uh, we broke out of this wedge right which i was talking about we broke out of the momentum pool that I uh, had drawn for you here, right, for the daily. And so the combination of the two just skyrocketed. We achieved over the bullish level that I set here, right, bullish bias. And so conquering uh, one, two, three, you know, we just boom, guys. We just boom. And then uh, look what happened. Look what happened. Look at this perfect, just beautiful, just pinpoint precision retest on this uh, wick that came all the way down back to this level and then boom just took off okay guys it just took off and uh, there was no going back so you did have a, a couple chances uh, to get in on this either on the initial breakout or on the retest and uh, I hope that uh, you know my video did help you establish that bullish level that bullish bias right uh, to the upside because we just absolutely uh, nailed it Al alpha fam and this isn't the uh, most appropriate of a drawing there but uh, you know you can see that we did have a, a double entry and a uh, just a rocket right and so guys um, you know, as you can see, we are, we are reaching that limitation around that uh, 20,800 because we really had to establish ourselves there and above this level in order to uh, pivot our momentum on the uh, macro, on the bigger timescales, you know, uh, bullishly. And while there was just a tremendous amount of enthusiasm based upon that DeFi play, based upon that Facebook play, right? And these two just built up on uh, on top of each other while, uh, you know, Doge and Twitter was essentially the groundwork. So this was Twitter, this was Facebook, and this was the big banks using DeFi, okay? So, um, guys, like uh, this is just an amazing uh, turn of events. Why? Because it would have been so easy to just break down. We had the head and shoulders. It was possible to break down, and we did have these uh, naked candles down here. It was very possible that we could explore this downside, and that's why these uh, alpha momentum pools, that's why the scales that I give you, right, these kind of, uh, you know, alpha momentum signals over here are so critical because if you're respecting my levels, then, of course, we're going to highly likely these are all probabilities but we're going to highly likely be able to capture that momentum to the upside uh, whereas if we break to the bottom of the momentum pool or if we violate some of these key uh, bearish levels on my uh, momentum uh, you know signal scale over here then most likely we're going to uh, break our momentum to the downside and so that's why I create these front runnable numbers and then I create the uh, hard numbers and then I create kind of like the uh, stretch goals, right, in these uh, uber bullish and uber bearish zones. But uh, look what essentially happened here. Let's go to the uh, one hour. You can see that, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin is popping up. Look, at just popping up right to my uber bullish level, guys. I mean, this is like no joke, okay? Like this... This really found its support right there. This really wicked down right to my momentum pool. And uh, we really did skyrocket. Look at this one hour candle, okay? I want you to pay attention to the structure of these one hour candles. And tell me, Alpha Fam, if you think that I'm just BSing you. Do you think that I'm just scamming you guys, right? Uh, do I know what I'm talking about or not? Look at this accumulation wedge inside of my alpha momentum pool right here right look at how it just popped up with that momentum on the hourly right from the top of my momentum pool right to my bullish bias boom boom guys like these levels were plotted in advance before this move and then what happened right off of that bullish bias boom where did we go to 
precisely to my uber bullish level, okay? Look at that, and then we had a little bit of indecision, and the market said, yeah, the banks, they're using DeFi, they're using crypto, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it, and where is the market settling? Right on my uber bullish level. Guys, this is bullish. How can I say anything else? This is bullish, guys. These are macro bullish levels, okay? So uh, while that doesn't mean that we have a, a turnaround, around in the market. We don't have a uh, bull market. We are still in a bear market on these kind of, uh, you know, just normal timescales that we think about in terms of like months, right? Uh, of course, over the course of 10 years, Bitcoin, of course, is bullish. OK, guys, like we're in a 10 year bull market in Bitcoin, but we are in a bear market on the uh, yearly and on the uh, months. OK, and so, guys, um, you know, uh, we do have to understand that uh, nothing is 100 percent yet. And this could be a massive fake out uh, before there is just another turnaround in the traditional markets. Because Bitcoin is going to be subject to all of this movement in the traditional markets. And if we take a look at uh, the dollar, uh, then you can see that the dollar is just having games uh, being played here. Uh, guess what happened? I mean, you can pretty much guess. Uh, the Japanese uh, spent $100 billion to create this candle down. And we just have a candle that's the exact same size. Okay? Uh, you know... Tell me, tell me this isn't more uh, currency manipulation, okay, guys? There is a reverse currency war occurring in the uh, DXY as you see Europe, as you see uh, Japan, as you see China, as you see all these countries defending their currencies against the strong dollar. And as uh, since everything is traded against the U.S. dollar, when the dollar comes down, of course, that's going to be bullish for other assets. If the dollar is rising, then, of course, people want to keep their highly valuable dollars. But if the uh, dollar is sinking because other countries are basically manipulating currency. Their currencies aren't that strong. They're just manipulating currencies by flooding the market with their dollar foreign reserves, essentially devaluing the dollar artificially, not based by actual demand. And so uh, we do see these temporary down points. But why does the market tend to come back up? Because this is an artificial manipulation. This is an artificial manipulation. And so uh, probably we're going to dip back down and come back up. And as long as they keep their currency war going, as long as they have enough uh, wealth that they're willing to just basically throw away. Because that's $100 billion the Japanese will never get back. And so did they spend another $100 billion? Are they going to spend another $100 billion? I mean, are they going to spend a trillion dollars to protect the Japanese yen? I mean, we don't know how long this could go on for, but my guess is at some point they need to have a minimum level of uh, foreign reserves. And at that point, uh, you know, they will have bought themselves enough time to prevent the uh, collapse of whatever markets they're trying to protect. And then we're going to see the dollar come back on an upswing. But as long as Europe, Japan, China are continuing to drop uh, dollars as a foreign reserves in order to protect their own currencies, in order to protect their own economies then we could see uh, this downtrend continue in the DXY until they get exhausted. But uh, I guarantee you that uh, if Jerome Powell continues the way that he goes, this doesn't have to be the bottom of the market. And uh, so uh, they took Jerome Powell's threats seriously. These foreign countries, they took Jerome Powell's threats seriously to be very, uh, you know, controlling of the American economy, and uh, they said, hey, uh, you know, your move, your move, Jerome Powell, in December, so we'll see how uh, Powell responds in the next Fed meeting in December, but for right now, the uh, foreign markets are counterbalancing uh, the dollar, and so while markets may get excited, um, you know, that does set us back a little bit in this uh, reverse currency war, in this uh, fight against inflation. And right now, it's really every country for themselves. Uh, there is not a significant amount of teamwork uh, being uh, conducted in the international sphere in terms of inflation and all of this stuff. It's all 
um, it's all a reverse currency war right now. And this is a very dangerous time because what happens is that uh, all of these countries start spending their foreign reserves. Their countries get very dangerously low on foreign reserves. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve in the uh, United States just continues to increase interest rates. And uh, what's going to happen is that that's going to over tighten the economy. And then also these other countries, they don't have the foreign reserves to uh, be able to help themselves uh, in case something goes wrong in their countries. And so everyone is being uh, spread very, very thin here. And it's very easy for something to break, especially if there's a bank run or a bank fails, because where do they go to? They go to their federal reserves. They go to their governments if a major bank fails. And if the if the government doesn't have enough real money to um, cover the uh, fractionalized um, you know savings inside of the banks, uh, where banks are actually loaning more money than they have, then we could see some very serious consequences in the global economy. And that's why many politicians are saying, uh, Fed, it's time to slow down. It's time to uh, pause and take a look at what's uh, happening. And we'll find out if that happens uh, in December or perhaps in uh, quarter one, 2023. Uh, guys, let's go ahead and uh, let's just go back to uh, Bitcoin briefly because, uh, of course, we don't necessarily um, expect that uh, this candle is going to retrace further. Uh, while I was recording this, you probably did see the bottom of the retracement. Um, but if it does come back uh, to my levels, of course, um, you know we are going to lose our bullish momentum at twenty thousand four hundred and forty. Um, we will, uh, you know. We'll still have some above 20,330, but just in case this is some type of a weird fake out, just uh, keep in mind this uh, uh, 20,330, 20,440. Uh, that area really does need to get preserved. And since we already had a uh, retest of it, I just um, I just think that it's probably gone. We probably are at this uh, new level. And so, guys, uh, really, this uh, alpha momentum scale, this uh, alpha momentum pools, I mean, they're just uh, really killing it. If you look at this retest, it didn't even uh, come back to the top of my two to five day projection. I mean, that is bullish, okay? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, you know, the uh, EMAs just so that we can understand uh, where, uh, you know, we are you know, uh, visually, because we are so bullish that this scale, that we're beyond the scale guys, like we are above the scale. And so, yes, if we look at this, uh, at the EMAs on the four hour, you can see that, uh, coming down to the 21 EMA is perfectly normal coming down to the nine EMA is perfectly normal. And we did come down to the four EMA. So eventually we're going to have to tag, you know, some of these EMAs. Uh, we always do that, and in order to uh, continue with our momentum, we will have to check back just to be healthy. And so right now we got a very, very bullish four check back. Um, so uh, let's just say that this thing presses on. We could see a dip all the way as low as uh, 20,500, and it would just be very healthy, okay? So I think the line in the sand is going to be that 20,440 for me. Um, you know, uh, it's not the end of the day yet, so all of these zones are still valid. I'll have to readjust these things uh, tomorrow uh, when uh, we have a fresh daily candle. But essentially, uh, 20,440 is the uh, line in the sand. And if we violate that, I am going to um, just consider this to be a fake out. But anything above that, um, I would say that a pullback is a blessing because you could uh, get into a position if you happen to miss it. And I hope you guys didn't miss this pullback, okay? Because yes, after I posted my video, we did have this pump almost around the same time as when I uh, posted my video. So just a uh, boom, guys. But uh, we also had a check back and you did have a second chance to get in. So I hope you watched that video and that you did take a position. And if we have another pullback, uh, please consider guys this is very bullish momentum and so uh, what we're seeing is real now of course uh, should we expect uh, this wick 
um, this type of a huge pump. No, uh, we're basically just at another level and we just need to uh, hold it. Okay. That's it. Like if we just go sideways now and just kind of chop around, that's also okay because we just had a major explosion and just like this major explosion, right? Just like this major explosion, sometimes you take a little bit of time to cool down, but uh, just remember that uh, you don't have to be perma bears. You can also, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you can switch from being bullish to bearish because on a day-to-day -day basis, we get new information. On a day-to-day -day basis, new things like Doge and Twitter, new things like uh, Facebook and Polygon, Matic, right? Uh, new things like a JP Morgan and DeFi come into play. New things like Jerome Powell increasing interest rates and being uh, more bearish than expected. And so the best that we can do in a volatile environment such as this as is wake up, measure the things that we need to uh, measure, like where is the dollar, right? Uh, how is the uh, VIX, the volatility? Look at the VIX, guys, okay? What did I tell you about the VIX? Uh, when the VIX is coming down, it's easier for trading. And what do we see? The VIX has just been going down and down and down. And so pretty good for trading. Like, uh, what did I tell you guys? Like, I've, I've been teaching you this stuff for a year so that when you wake up in the morning, you can see, oh, the dollar is down. Oh, the VIX is down. You know what? Um, if I see a coin that has a very good setup, maybe I should get into that setup because uh, we are, you know, leaving the not good for trading zone and entering the pretty good for trading zone. Maybe, maybe I could take some risk, right? This is what you have to be telling yourselves when you wake up. And because news changes every day, just personally, I don't recommend uh, too long of a swing trade unless you really do understand what uh, hodling means, unless you understand what investing means, that it could take two years to get your money back if something just really goes crazy in the market, right? That sort of thing. But in terms of just a trading, guys, like, uh, you know, I'm setting up these uh, alpha momentum uh, scales over here. I'm setting up these uh, alpha momentum pools so that you can have a, a very clean, good idea of where, uh, you know, Bitcoin needs to be in order for you to kind of uh, enter. And also, um, and it's not financial advice. This is just for educational purposes. But, uh, you know, it, it should give you a sense of it if you're also checking the dollar and the VIX on a daily basis. And if you have a good setup don't buy into FOMO you would have gotten wrecked if you bought if you FOMO'd into this buy at support right buy at support right and uh, buy at uh, you know uh, cre uh, key setups uh, you know for these uh, uh, bullish turnarounds and uh, you know uh, you should be uh, rewarded on average okay as long as you take your profit if people didn't take their profit here I mean, they just missed out on a huge move, right? A lot of things will be retracing right now. So guys, these are the lessons that we have to learn uh, from this market. And if we jump over to stocks, you can kind of see what's happening on the stock market. This is what I was telling you guys, okay? Like, um, uh, this got moved. Uh, the, there is a possibility that, um, you know, that this uh, thing just continues to the downside, okay? But I, I still I still somewhat expect that we're going to push through here and make an effort, make an effort to try to get to uh, resistance. I think the bulls are really going to do whatever they can to try to push this market back up so that we can avoid uh, the uh, kiss of death, okay? If you guys didn't see my uh, kiss of death episode, you have to watch my kiss of death episode. Please take a look at my channel, and uh, right now, just forget about the rest of this video. Right now, go to the uh, Macro Monday, the last Macro Monday video, and uh, look for the kiss of death episode, because this is going to determine our future now guys uh, just in a nutshell uh, on the uh, monthly uh, 21 EMA uh, you know it's essentially where this uh, teal line is right here and the stock market has to get above that and break above it otherwise we are going to enter what's known as a kiss of death and yes yes 
It is as bad as it sounds. It is going to be one of the most painful events that can happen in a generation in the stock market if the kiss of death is confirmed. And the confirmation will be is will be if we get rejected from the monthly 21 on the S&P 500 or uh, you know any other index that you happen to want to look at. We do have to break this level. We do have to hold above it. We do have to break above this a downtrend. It is make or break time for the market. And that's why when we see the stock market coming down like this, it is very scary. We need it to continue to go. We need this to be uh, perhaps an ABC wave up here and then somehow, you know, a turnaround. OK, we don't want to see some type of, a, you know, uh, you know, uh, impulse to the downside uh, once we get to these levels, because it will be the kiss of death. OK, and that can take us. That can take us extremely extremely low and i'm not even going to talk about it on this episode because i don't want to scare you because it is a, a bullish day but just remember guys uh i'm not changing my position uh based upon how the winds blow okay my position is that we are in danger of a kiss of death movement on the stock market and that this could drag everything down with it everything okay we're talking about the everything bubble still bursting now there is the possibility that we break above it and maybe the market does a double top and perhaps works its way down later to just kind of check this liquidity area over time and so maybe uh, this gets deferred maybe the uh, powers that be kick the can down the road a double top is just as valid for a downturn as this type of a v top okay so just remember that um, you know we don't have to be perma bull, uh, perma bears either. Okay, there is the possibility for this market to recover here, even if later on it has a double top because things are just so bad. World War Three breaks out, whatever. You can just make up whatever you want. But the fact is, uh, for this month, for December, right until the end of the year, we are really going to be fighting to avoid this kiss of death. Okay. And uh, guys, uh, I just wanted to make sure that you have that in your mind um, as we have some uh, realism in the market. Now, going back to a uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, assuming that this uh, bullishness uh, remains, then what can we reasonably expect, right? What could we reasonably expect, assuming that we do have a uh, valid bull run? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this uh, EMA that we just broke here on the daily, this uh, 89 EMA, as long as we can hold above the 89 EMA, then on the daily, we could potentially see a run up all the way to $25,000, right? We could uh, maybe perhaps get a, a double top with here and maybe even $28,000 if uh, this, uh, you know, if this uh, jumble of uh, EMAs over here, this uh, 800, this uh, 300 simple uh, moving average, this 200 simple moving average, it's actually the 255 that I use. Um, uh, you know, if these ones are, that are converging right here act as kind of like a, a cock blocker, then, uh, you know, uh, we could have some type of a move that gets into this area by the end of the year. And then maybe we have that uh, final capitulation. And I'll show you something similar, right? We did something similar over here, guys. So uh, don't think that this is impossible, you know. We could have uh, just a series of uh, nice moves, you know, on Bitcoin, uh, have some type of apex, right? You can see we got up to the 200 simple moving average, and then, uh, boom, like we just uh, came back down, okay? So, uh, again, like, uh, don't be a perma bear, don't be a perma bull. No one cares if you're a bear or a bull, okay? Nobody cares. That doesn't matter. Just be a clever little alpha monkey, guys, okay? Like, be a be an alpha monkey. Uh, just figure out uh, what the alpha for the day is, the uh, VIX, 
the uh, dollar, uh, you know, what is our trend, okay, what is the momentum, what, you know, what is uh, Alpha Commission pointing out for those momentum plays, and then if you can put two and two together, you can use your brain just a little bit and find the right setups, right, something low, not something that's already popped off because that's obviously going to retrace and dump on you, right? then you can position yourself uh, pretty humbly. And then should the uh, current change to the other direction where suddenly uh, the VIX and the dollar are spiking up and, uh, you know, the trend is just going sideways, then maybe you kind of uh, step back a little bit, right? Then, guys, then you're going to be, uh, you know, rewarded in this uh, market, especially if you can remember to take your profit on these pumps because they're not guaranteed. They can always be fake outs. And guys, you can see that uh, Bitcoin could be having a little bit of a fake out here, but this does look nice, okay? And uh, again, a pullback, uh, look, let's see on the daily, uh, I did the uh, four hour, but look, a pullback on the daily to uh, 20,500, even down to that 20,400 would be perfectly normal. And look, guys, uh, we already had a pullback down here to uh, uh, 20,000 uh, on the daily. And so probably we have room to continue to run before we need to do a another check back. But I'm just saying, like, uh, it, you know, it wouldn't be weird if we do have a little bit of a pullback, okay? And so, but you want to position yourself more on this area and more on this area than just on some type of a FOMO pump, okay? And so, uh, you know, this is a bit of a blessing to have this uh, pullback here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the weekly to see what the weekly is saying. Yeah, look, I mean, the weekly, uh, we just pulled back to the uh, 9 EMA. So that's exactly where all the bullishness started. And we had that pop through the uh, 200 simple moving average, which I was telling you could provide a, a huge pop, right? And that's exactly uh, what we got. And so on the weekly, our next stop would be 22,500-ish. So, uh, guys, if we are in a weekly squeeze play, then, you know, 22,500 is very realistic. And then uh, 25,000, 26,000 on multiple, multiple time frames is also very realistic, with uh, some time frames suggesting the possibility of 28,000, maybe even 30,000 as a, a possibility. Should we continue with bullishness as jumping over to stocks here, as the stock market decides whether or not it's going to explore this uh, downtrend line. If, however, stocks enter the kiss of death, where you see this uh, bearish engulfing candle here on the weekly, right? Uh, you know, if this thing cannot recover itself and if it continues to the downside and if we never get over that uh, monthly uh, 21 EMA, then we could be in significant danger and perhaps uh, Bitcoin and the rest of crypto will be taken along with it. So, guys, I'm not a bear. I'm not a bull. I am just a, a clever little alpha monkey getting into positions daily, taking my profits daily. And um, if I see something really, really juicy, then, you know, I'll, you know, consider that, okay, in terms of a, a DCA. And if we uh, jump back to a Bitcoin, I'll show you uh, again uh, why I'm open-minded to uh, DCAing in at this point, even though for the last year I have been highly, highly against DCAing in. And that's if we go ahead and put on the log scale, we get my uh, alpha um, uh, alpha origin channels here. Let me turn off my momentum pools. Let me turn off my signals. Let me just move this thing over, get rid of these uh, EMAs. And what you can see is, let's even put on a, a line graph here. What you can see is that um, Bitcoin essentially has come down to my bloodline and while we're underneath it, we could get rejected here and go lower. But if we break above the bloodline, which uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what our current level is for that. Look at this. We, we, we essentially uh, wicked off of my uh, bloodline here. Look at this, guys. Look at this perfect. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice this. Look at this. Look at how uh, just perfectly 
the uh, alpha origin channels are working i'm telling you guys like other guys like have uh origin uh you know channels origin lines on their charts they have no idea what they're talking about theirs are totally misaligned but look at this perfect retest of the underside of my uh bloodline i mean it is just a uh, pin point perfect week after week after week after week after week just pin point precision and so what's the danger here okay because we know the other guys uh you know those uh, kind of akosa uh, lines are just uh, totally wrong i mean uh you know uh, you have some of these uh like a uh, very narcissistic guys uh you know trying to say you know that they're the uh, best in the industry and nobody else you know does it but in fact we should be learning from each other okay i learned uh you know how to set up origin uh you know lines um uh from uh cosa but uh you know for some reason like uh you know some guys just get uh, really full of themselves and they can't figure out how to readjust these things look we broke down perfectly from uh, the uh, capitulation lines that I set up here. Uh, we bounced off my bloodline. We wavered around the bloodline. We are now testing the bottom of the bloodline. If we break down from the bloodline, we could see some of these lower DCA points. But we are in an extremely good DCA area on the macro if we are able to recapture the bloodline and perhaps even make a move you know, uh, dare I say, even as high as $50,000, it is in reach, okay? We could have a run to $50,000. We could have a run to uh, $60,000. And, uh, you know, guys, like uh, $28,000, it's very probable. And look, if we put in a, a run to $28,000, what are we going to have here, right? What are we going to have here? We are going to have, effectively, a, a massive head and shoulders, which would then have a, a measured move, right? Which would then have a measured move. Let me change this to a, a color that we can see, actually. Right here, right to my white line of around $40,000. So let's say that we get to 28, we complete this uh, inverted head and shoulders, we could have a run to 40. I mean, we could see a, a bull run on the crypto markets. Now, that's, now that all assumes that we don't get rejected, all right, that we don't get rejected by my bloodline. And I'm setting these things up in this way, and I'm trying to uh, convince you of just how uh, you know, significant and how accurate, uh, this, uh, you know, alpha origin channel has been alpha origins channels, because, um, look guys, like this, this area that we're in is as precarious as it is juicy. If we just zoom out a little bit, we can see that there is potentially a macro cycle right that is being put in where if we just ignore all the little ups and downs you know on the market right if we just ignore all these you know just just the noise of the signal right then we can see that the clean signal is something like this potentially okay where maybe we do get as low as 12,000 or 14,000 and the longer time that this takes you know, the higher that price is. So to, I would say 12000 to 14000 is still very much on the table. It just could take us longer to get there than people thought. And just like we could have this downturn, right, in the middle of the top of our signal, okay, we can also have an upturn in the middle of our, you know, of our down signal. Do you see how that works? Like, there's nothing that prevents a, a bull run here, even if we're in a bear market. And then uh, when we get to the end of uh, 2024, when we get to uh, 2025, then, guys, then we're going to see something potentially very special happening on Bitcoin, which could just change the world. And if you see Twitter, if you see Facebook, if you see big banks using crypto... Don't 
don't just assume that this can't happen, okay? This could happen. Now, it could also be 10 years of sideways as maybe just a giant accumulation wedge gets put in. And then, you know, we have to come 10 years later to reach this this type of uh, point. But, uh, you know, there's no point in projecting uh, that far out. We don't know. And also the technological space changes so fast. Uh, Bitcoin itself is, has only been around for approximately, you know, a decade. And so in another decade, we don't even know what type of technologies may be out, uh, what could be the entire landscape of the world with uh, centralized uh, digital uh, currencies. And so uh, we just, it's just too far out to be thinking about that stuff. And so uh, all we have to pay attention to right now is that we are in an incredible DCA area on this chart, but that we are also at risk of losing support of that bloodline. And that could suggest deeper blood in the water if we do get a rejection here. Okay. And so, yes, we are at a critical point where we could have a bull run or we could have just a catastrophic collapse. And that's why I keep coming back to the stock market, guys. Don't, don't, you know, lose your eye, you know, don't take your eye off the ball. Okay. The stock market is the ball here. Let me get out of log. There we go. This is the normal chart. This is the real chart. Don't take your eye off of the ball. We have to get above this uh, 4,000 on the S&P futures chart, okay? We have to cleanly sit above there and then break out of this downtrend. Otherwise, we are going to enter the kiss of death. And it's not a coincidence, guys. It's not a coincidence that this kiss of death setup is happening at the exact same levels that we have the potential to break down from my Bitcoin bloodline. It's not a coincidence. The accuracy, okay? The accuracy, the sheer audacity and accuracy of the alpha origin channels in the last year has just protected your butt at the top, at the breakdown here, at the breakdown here, at the capitulation breakdown here, and then at the second wave capitulation right here, right? top of the market, you know, last chance to get out, last chance, capitulation, second wave capitulation, bottom of the market on a top, on a top of the uh, macro super cycle. Are we entering the bottom of a super cycle? We don't know yet. Pay attention to the stock market, guys we could end up working our way down, okay? We could end up working our way down. And this is $12,000 here, okay? It looks scary, but this is $12,000. That's a number we're familiar with. This level right here, it looks scary, but that's $14,000. These are going to be blessings if we can invest, if we can DCA in on these levels. Those are going to be blessings, okay? But just remember, if the uh, S&P, if the stock market conquers its monthly 21, and if Bitcoin is above my bloodline, be open-minded to a bull market as high as 30000 40000 even $60,000, where we could end up topping out, putting in an accumulation wedge that lasts years, perhaps one final fake out before we do a run. You feel me, Alpha Fam? See what I'm saying? You see how twisted and distorted these markets can become? Let me draw that out for you one more time with a, just a little bit more of a close up, okay? The bottom of this macro super cycle, we know we've had a top to a macro super cycle, right? We came from the bottom, we created a top, we essentially had a, a triple top over here, you know, on these diagonals. We're now going to create a bottom structure, and yes, this bottom structure could go to twelve, fourteen thousand dollars. It could just, it could just do that and make this cup before eventually coming back on a new macro super cycle to the upside. Or alternatively, it can have 
a mid-cycle run, create a fake top, come back down, freak everyone out, right? Chop around there, and then go for, for it, right? Putting in a, a massive accumulation wedge with a bit of a fake out later on. And and this could just be a double bottom to this price. You know, uh, it, before I made those lines, you probably thought, oh my God, like that's a huge collapse in the market. Well, yeah, it's going to feel exactly like what we already saw. And that's what I was saying. The stock market could put in a double top. And if the stock market puts in a double top, right? If the stock market breaks its monthly 21 and puts in a double top, we could see another bear market in stocks. But that doesn't mean that this wouldn't be an accumulation wedge on Bitcoin. This is still a very young asset, and so it still has room to go. Okay? So, again, guys, like, uh, we have to be prepared for both. And that's why, uh, you know, this, you know, these alpha origin channels are just so audacious. That's why, you know, their accuracy is so important. Because they have just saved our butts time and time again, and they have provided that 20,000 mile view, right? 20,000, is it 20,000 miles or 20,000 meters, okay? 20,000 miles sounds like a lot. But, uh, you know, that airplane view down, right? Where, where you can see exactly what's happening, and you can plot the course. If we're above the bloodline, and especially if we're above that uh, blue line, we're going for that mid-cycle bounce. If we're below the red line, the bloodline, and if we're getting rejected from the bloodline, then we're probably going for twelve to 14,000. You know. That's just how it is. So, guys, uh, that's the uh, macro that I wanted to share with you today. And, um, of course, I'm going to keep you updated. Um, I do make these uh, full-length uh, episodes every once in a while just so that I can provide as much context and uh, much-needed, uh, you know, kind of perspective, you know, in addition to the uh, one-minute and the five-minute and the 20-minute videos that I put out, um, you know, more frequently now. I'm going to keep up with the shorter time frames, uh, the shorter uh, the shorter videos because I think you guys enjoy it more. But uh, I do think that it is important to get this uh, longer kind of exposure to messages and to uh, information uh, just to uh, fill yourself up with uh, context, not just, uh, you know, day-to-day -day trades where you may get lost in the weeds, right? We got we to gotta see uh, the uh, trees and uh, the whole forest. We can't just look at one, right? We can't just look at leaves, right? And so right now, if we just look at um, one spike on the chart here, right, uh, we're, just, we're just looking at one leaf on a very, very, very big forest, right, which has a far... Uh, you know, broader context to it. And so, guys, like we're at a good place here, okay? If you missed the pump, don't worry. Don't worry. We haven't confirmed that we're going up all this way. We haven't confirmed that we're, broke, that we're breaking down. We're retesting the alpha bloodline. On these alpha origin channels, we're retesting the bloodline. OK, and then if we get above it, we're going to rechallenge the capitulation lines. If we get below it, we're going to touch the grass on my green line, which is just an epic place to buy. We don't know how it's going to go yet. We don't know if stocks are going to have the kiss of death immediately. When you when you exit this video, go watch that Macro Monday video on the kiss of death. Skip the first part that was just going over stocks. You can jump to the middle of the video. I have timestamps on there, right? Just jump right to the kiss of death part where it explains uh, what's going on and it shows you examples, okay? Please do that. All right, guys, not much to, uh, not much to add to that. Let's go back to the uh, four hour and just uh, remind you of what our uh, key levels are. Let me take off these uh, alpha origin channels. Get those uh, juicy signals up and our momentum pools. Just uh, don't forget, right? Don't forget. 
two to five day projection, okay, suggested that we would be in this area. If we have a pullback, no problem, okay? The daily momentum pool suggested that we would, you know, need to get on top of that in order to be bullish. Man, we got on top of it and boom, right? To be uber bullish, we really have to hold this level. Looks like we're really trying to. Okay, but again, no problem if we just come back to this bullishness. No problem whatsoever. No problem if we come back to 20,300. No problem whatsoever. The daily momentum is still preserved. Okay. We do not want to break under 20,200, and we definitely, definitely do not want to break under 19,870. Okay. Our momentum will will basically be lost. And this will have been a massive fake out. But right now, guys, we look really good. This looks like a very Wyckoffian kind of structure that looks good. Okay, this looks like a bull flag. Okay. We'll find out. Let's look at our volatility just really quickly. Volatility on the four hours screaming. Screaming to the upside. Daily. It's in a contraction mode. This is this is a little bit troubling to me. It's still contracting as our price is going up. I don't like that. I don't like that our daily volatility is contracting as price is going up. That means that when it eventually expands explosively, that it could actually do a reversal to the downside. Now, volatility is direction neutral. We'll have to judge that when the time comes. But that is very weird, okay? That is very weird in my mind. So just I'm watching that. Let's look at the two-day. Two-day is expanding to the upside. So, you know, hats off to the two-day. You know, maybe this is the this is the play, okay? Let's look at the five-day. Five-day hasn't decided yet. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly hasn't decided yet. So I think uh, because of where the five-day is positioned, the five-day is going to really decide the fate of this uh, market. The two-day is, is basically lifting us up. I, I like this. Okay, I like the four hour and the two day. Let's see if we can get the uh, daily to join us. Maybe this thing just needs to flip around or something. Not sure exactly what's going on there, but it is just the daily. So uh, give it some time because it just had a huge whipsaw action on the daily. So just give it some time to reset maybe. And if we take a look at some of our altcoins, Look at this, guys. Look at this. CRV, remember this uh, direction that I was pointing out on CRV? CRV crossed the, uh, crossed the channel that we had carved out there. It broke out. It used the diagonal as support. And just boom, it just went for it. Look at that. Beautiful CRV. That's a, a DeFi play probably exploding because of that news that the uh, banks are using DeFi, right? Kadena, still pretty weak. I don't like I don't like Kadena under these levels. Okay? Like I, I much prefer Kadena up here. Okay? Like at this where we know that it can explode up. Okay? Where we know that it can have a massive movement. I want to see Kadena up here and do that again. Okay. This structure looks okay to me. It just uh like what are you doing, Kadena? Like come join the party, right? Flux. Looking good. I mean, look, it's still at our uh, levels that uh, that I pointed out a while ago, and it's just it's just continuing to try, guys. It's just continuing to try. It's still looking good to me. If I put it on the log scale, look, this was our entry, higher low, higher low, flux still looking good. I, I don't know what to say. Like guys, like a flux is still looking good. It's just taking its time. Ada. Very similar to uh, Kadena, but actually, guys, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, Ada looks better than Kadena right now. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, let's just give these things time. You know, they may just need time. XRP, doing good stuff. It's following Bitcoin. A little bit more conservative than Bitcoin on this move. Uh but uh, you can see this is a pretty bullish flag. If Bitcoin continues to go, XRP is going to continue to go. Zill looks good. 
looks good. Still holding these lows. Uh, like like Kadena and Ada, it's just a little bit under where I'd like it to be. Would like it to be a little bit higher before I have faith in it. Kratos, just one that we were watching, just continuing to be uh, suppressed here. Just you know, it it is crossing these levels like I suggested. It's now at the middle. It's crossing, and maybe it'll make a run. I don't know, but uh, a little bit of a double bottom here. Just this has been a very very weak asset, so just take a lot of caution. Uh, C pool completely retracing that huge move that it had. Just watch out for C pool, okay? But overall, I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't the worst structure that we've ever seen. Wherever C pool comes down to, as long as it's, you know, as long as it's higher than this one, it's, it'll be reasonable, okay? I mean, this was a love. This was a brilliant move by C pool, by the way. Look at this. Look at this. 500%. Yeah, I mean, like uh, you, you, you deserve some cooldown time, okay? So, those are all for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.